Hi there, my name is Benedict and I work within the research project SAFE. I've studied electrical engineering and management and technology at the Technical University of Munich and I currently pursue a PhD in the field of geoinformatics. My research work is supervised by Professor Kolbe, also at the Technical University of Munich. So what is actually the objective of the research project I'm working in? Our aim at SAFE is to create a digital twin for the city of Ingolstadt. And I think that this picture gives a pretty good uh, impression on the different aspects of a digital twin. So on the left, you have multiple actors. You have citizens, municipalities, energy providers, transportation providers, and, yeah, and companies in general. And they all want to have different applications. So, for example, citizens want to monitor the quality of air. Municipalities want to do urban and traffic planning. And for that, they want to estimate noise propagation levels um, of the traffic within the city. And a lot of those applications require simulations and ana analytics on the whole district or on parts of it. And this could be, for example, energy demand estimations or solar potential analysis, or as I said, uh, the simulation of noise propagation. And in order to run such simulations uh, and analytics, a digital representation uh, of the district is needed. So this representation can consist of a virtual 3D city model, network models and also building information models. Moreover, dynamic information can also be sensed with weather sensors or inductive loops uh, that are used to measure traffic volumes. And all partners can then register their models, their data, their tools your sensors in a resource registry and this registry can then also be queried. Um, if you're interested in the concepts in more detail, uh, have a look at the link I'll provide you in the um, video description. And within this overall concept, my research work is actually focusing on building up a virtual 3D city model and to tailor it to tailor it to solve different uh, challenges in the development and testing of automated driving systems. And within this talk, I want to give some insights and some very practical hands-on examples of what we have been doing and are currently doing. <laughs> in order to structure this presentation, we'll go through this architectural overview step by step. Uh, on the left, we have the data sources, which we need uh, to build up the digital twin or virtual district model um, represented in the middle. And based on the district model, we can then run analytics and simulations, which is depicted on the right. Okay, let's start with point clouds and remote sensing. You can actually put a LiDAR on a plane and fly over a complete area and get lots of measurement data. In our case, we bought these measurement data sets from the state agency in Bavaria, but actually more and more data sets are released as open data. The point cloud data is then distributed as normal files um, and I'm going to open one of them with a software called FME. Uh, FME comes with a data inspector which supports a lot of different formats and I'll provide you the links to the software in the video description. Okay, that's what the point cloud looks like. It's really an unstructured list of points with X, Y and Z coordinates and intensity value, which are a measure for the return strength of the laser pulse. For a human, it's yeah, pretty easy to understand what the points represent but um, for a computer, it's not that straightforward. Let's move on to the next data source, which are LOD2 building models. LOD stands for level of detail, and we also bought them at the state agency, but again, more and more uh, open data sets are published. You can visualize those models along with the point cloud in FME. Make sure to select the correct format uh, city GML and now FME loads all of the building models which takes some seconds. 
Uh, you can select the individual wall of a building and inspect the attributes of that wall. The wall is associated with the building, uh, which can also be selected. Um, and the information about the building includes, for example, the function of the building. So like uh, residential building, school, parking facility and so on. The geometries of the building are really only one aspect. The other is all the information attached to the building. However, we are mainly interested into the street space. So we need uh, traffic lights, traffic signs, the trees and the roads. The next data source is also point clouds of the company 3D Mapping Solutions. Uh, they have been surveyed by mounting lasers on top of measurement vehicles and the points have a relative accuracy of one to three centimeters. As you see, they are much denser when you compare them to the airborne laser scans from before. Based on the mobile laser scans, reference maps can then be created for which often uh, OpenDrive is used. OpenDrive is a standard that analytically describes road networks and uh, it was mainly developed for driving simulation purposes, but it can also be geo-referenced. OpenDrive follows a reference line based approach so that each uh, feature or object uh, is defined relative to the reference line. Uh, this leads to the situation that you need multiple affine transformations in 3D until you get, the, for example, the world coordinates of a traffic sign or of a tree. Um, it is quite automotive specific, however, we see increasing tool support of OpenDrive within the uh, automotive domain. And you can actually open an OpenDrive dataset with an editor, as the files are XML based. Uh, here you see the reference line described as mathematical functions, and uh, the objects are defined relative to this reference line. OpenDrive solves problems in the simulation domain. However, it has very limited support in the geo-information system domain as the modeling concepts are very automotive and simulation specific. To build up virtual 3D city models, the open standard CityGML is used internationally. Uh, CityGML is standardized within the OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium, and the application domains are very interdisciplinary. CityGML represents semantics, 3D geometry, topology, appearances, and multiple LODs. Furthermore, the new version of CityGML, CityGML 3.0, has a revised and extended concept for transportation and infrastructure. Street spaces, for example, can be partitioned in distinct spaces and the traffic areas are the ground surfaces of the traffic spaces. CityGML3 enables an integrated representation for multiple transportation infrastructure. So for example, roads, railways, pedestrian walkways, waterways and so on. You'll also find more papers on these topics in the video description. We have multiple open drive datasets of real road spaces, but we also want the functionality and tool support of the virtual city model domain. That's why we implemented the transformer Airtran and released it as open source. You can download it on airtran.io, where we also list some demo applications. Uh, each transformation can be configured via an internal Kotlin DSL and then it takes some seconds to convert the OpenDrive dataset to CityGML. Now we can also visualize the dataset in FME since FME has no support for OpenDrive but it has support for CityGML. As you see, the roads, the road lines, the signs and all road objects uh, are converted to CityGML and moreover, 
all the attributes of the objects are also converted. But we would like to have some more details, especially on the facades. That's why we started creating LOD3 building models uh, based on the MLS point clouds you've seen before. Uh, we are about to release this data set uh, as open data. I'll provide you uh, the links in the video description. So now we have CityGML datasets from different sources and we are able to combine them. When we build up a digital twin of a city, we want to be able to access the digital representation and query this model. The benefit is that we can load the CityGML dataset into a database. So the 3D City database is a a uh, free uh, geo database for uh, storing, representing and managing virtual 3D city models on top of uh, widely used spatial databases like Postgres uh, with PostGIS uh, extension. And it can be easily deployed in the cloud, but also on a local machine by simply using Docker. Docker can set up and start a 3D city database with just uh, one command on your computer or also in the cloud. In order to load the datasets into the 3D city database, uh, we can use the importer exporter tool, which is freely available on GitHub. We need to, to connect to the database and enter the credentials then, and after a successful connection, the CityGML datasets can be selected and imported to the database. Now we have the 3D City database up running and filled with geodata, and we can start to query the virtual 3D City model. For a fast connection to the database, I'll use the open source tool PG Admin which is a management interface to the Postgres database. First, uh, we can inspect the solitary vegetation object table and get all of the different trees listed here. And second, we can also count uh, the objects depending on the different object names. And the third example is we can visualize the center lines the left and right uh, lane boundaries uh, on a background map in 2D. Generally, the extension PostGIS comes with a lot of functionality which can be applied on the models. This includes measurement functions for distances and angles, geometry processing functions, bounding box operations, affine transformations and so on. Um, I'll provide you a link uh, to the documentation in the video description. If you're working on a software project, you don't have to implement the data structure of the model and you'll get the GIS functionality of the Geo database without locally uh, importing some Geo library. However, there are many tools that only read certain formats and don't support uh, CityGML. In our case, we want to run the driving simulator virtual test drive uh, within the city model. So virtual test drive uh, only reads the graphics format OpenSceneGraph. And in order to convert the city model to OpenSceneGraph, we can quickly set up a small FME workbench. FME is short for Feature Manipulation Engine and it allows to process and manipulate models by connecting uh, transformers. So first we add a CityGML reader and here we see the different uh, feature types of the datasets, building, city furniture, roads and so on. And then we add an OpenSceneGraph writer. Since OpenSceneGraph is a graphics format, we'll uh, tri triangulate all the geometries and merge the meshes before connecting them to the writer. 
And it's also very simple to color um, the different features. So I'll use green for the trees and gray for everything else. Moreover, the roads are textured by adding an image of asphalt. And finally, we can run the FME workbench. And when the processing is completed, we can take the OpenSea Graph dataset and copy it to the driving simulator virtual test drive. I already set up a virtual test drive project and here you can see the scenario editor in 2D. We can start the first basic driving simulation within the city model uh, we set up during the course of this video. And this is actually rendered from the perspective of the Ego vehicle. With this small driving simulation, we completed the architectural overview and I want to conclude this video with the slide from the start. So what have we done in the context of this diagram? We combined different data sources and merged them to a virtual 3D city model using the standard city GML. Furthermore, um, OpenDrive was used as a road network standard. And then we actually ran some very basic analytics on the city model. And we conducted a driving simulation within uh, the model. Furthermore, we applied methods which scale quite well. For example, uh, there also exists an FME server edition with which you could uh, generate uh, your nightly models. Moreover, the whole processing chain is based on open standards as we want to ensure tool interoperability for the future. Uh, I mean, there are so many different actors uh, in so many different domains that we don't know all the applications we want to connect in the coming years.